Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the Kaba Ilko 7124LA2-26D. This has a KD in it. Doesn't really so much matter for the purposes of this video, but we'll certainly uh, describe what that means. Here's the cylinder. So the first thing that might strike you is it looks awfully short. Um, and if it does strike you as awfully short, it's because it is. This is a three-quarter inch cylinder. They are not uh, very common, at least in current hardware, and where you'd end up using this, um, a thin door, most likely. Um, I can't really think of an application of hardware where you would be forced to use such a short mortise cylinder, but if you had an inch and three-eighths thick door and you had a mortise lock in there, you're certainly going to need a shorter length mortise cylinder. Uh, speaking of the length, let's go over the dimensional properties of this first, and then we'll talk about where you may end up seeing this. Overall length of the cylinder is three quarter inch. That's measured from the underside of the head to the back of the cam. All manufacturers of cylinders measure their, uh, their length of their mortise cylinders that way with the exception of best. They do it to the back of the body itself. Um, but by and large, underside of the head to the back of the cam, that's the important dimension. So unusually short. A effect of it being unusually short is you no longer have a five or a six or a seven pin cylinder. You have a four pin cylinder. So there are only four chambers drilled in here which will result in literally a shorter key. Okay, This is a Lockwood 1004 keyway. Let's talk about where you'd end up using this in, at de in, in depth at length right now. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Where would you use this cylinder? Well, it's probably going to be in a thinner door. It could also be in a standard door where you have the um, cylinder body offset from center. You could have a five inch thick door, and you could still need a three quarter inch cylinder because you've biased that lock body towards that one end, and you simply don't need a longer cylinder. You might have, again, that inch and three-eighths thick door. You might have a mortise lock in it that is a one-inch wide face. There are people who make those mortise locks for thin doors like that. And while you can certainly install a, one, a 15 sixteenths or a one-inch or an inch and an eighth or inch and a quarter, etc., you're probably looking to not have to unnecessarily add blocking rings or cylinder collars just to eat up that loose space. You might also be doing something unusual where you are installing the hardware, you're taking a Forstner bit and drilling the face of the door and you intentionally want to recess this hardware as flush to the face of the door as possible or recessed in ever so slightly when you can't have any projecting hardware into an opening. Admittedly that'd probably be an unusual application but if you if your door thickness was inch and three quarter and half of that is seven eighths. Let's say that you need a cylinder that's seven eighths in length. Um, not including a trim ring or a cylinder collar that you would certainly need. You know, even one that's an eighth of an inch. So a one inch cylinder. But you really don't need a cylinder that is that long in most instances. You need one that is as short as possible. Uh, you want to keep that hardware from hanging off the door as much as possible. And in certain applications, you know, a 1 inch or a 15 sixteenths, like for aluminum storefront, 15 sixteenths is the right length cylinder, and you're still going to use a, a cylinder collar. And depending on the lock body that you're using, it's likely you could make this work without a cylinder collar or a trim ring or a blocking ring. But those devices are used under side of the head for two reasons. When you drill the hole in the door, um, it will cover, because it has a slightly greater diameter, any sort of uh, imperfection to the hole, especially a trim ring that will be noticeably wider than the face of this cylinder. That's number one. Um, number two, it's an anti-theft device. When I, if I'm going to put a pipe wrench on the head of this cylinder or attempt that, if what I'm biting onto is a collar that's going to spin, it helps or works towards defeating that sort of attack. That's the other reason for it. But at the end of the day, you want hardware to project off the face of the door at a minimum every time it's possible. 
not only cylinders, which aren't a big deal, but hinges, hinge knuckles. You don't want to use a four and a half inch wide hinge when you can use a four inch hinge. Okay? That'd be an example of that. So that's where you would end up using this. Let's talk about this and we'll di dissect the part number. Um, first, before we dissect the part number, solid brass construction, one and five thirty second diameter, 32 ultra fine threads per inch. That's a standard thread type on this t size mortise cylinder of which there are four peanut cylinders are three quarter inch standard builders hardware cylinders like this which are one and five thirty second you have what would be called master ring or jumbo cylinders those are inch and a half and then you have mogul cylinders um, which are two inch the mogul you'll see in detention work the master ring or jumbo you jumbo you will see in commercial applications um, where either the age of the building, 1920, 30, 40, 50, would have been the heyday for the master ring. In fact, the Empire State Building was built with all master ring from Corbin. That's, a, that's an inch and a half diameter mortise cylinder. Why is it bigger? Well, the reason is it has what's called a master ring or a master ring sleeve surrounding the plug. It basically gives you two shear lines rather than one and al allows you to isolate the TMK or top master key from the biddings at the standard shear line. It is a way to give you substantially greater change changes in a key system. And it also allows you to isolate that against a Dayton attack. Those are locksmithing topics that aren't part of this video. Um, so that's where you would use that inch and a half. But the one in 532nd, that's what you're going to see everywhere, uh, pretty much. Those peanut cylinders are unusual. I actually don't have um, any in the website because they're long discontinued, but I do have a couple in my collection, um, my lock collection. Uh, they were for 1950s era, maybe 1960s era aluminum storefront is where you would see three quarter inch peanut cylinders. Um, I think there was an application where they used it in a lock as well. Anyway, solid brass construction on both the housing and the plug. That's going to allow you a very nice, smooth operation for years and years and years, decades, in fact. Works very smooth. Okay, That four-pin blank doesn't project out of the back. Okay, Now, let's switch to the screen view and let's dissect the part number so that you can understand everything that goes into what this cylinder is. By the way, that's just a peel-away protective film that's there covering the satin chrome plated brass scalp plate. That's a piece of brass. Uh, that is satin chrome plated and it's a scalp plate because it's very thin and a scalp plate just covers something else and that's the role of that or the what that does. Let's switch to the screen view now. If you are enjoying this video please click thumbs up or like and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Here is the item that we are looking at. Let's first take a look at some photographs. Here is the box with the part number. There's the cylinder, really short as you can see there. The face, and then a close-up of the 1004 Lockwood blank, or the keyway. You can see the pin tumbler in here. That would be considered a paracentric keyway because the term paracentric, as it relates to the locksmithing industry, means that the keyway crosses the center line of the broaching. So you've got these features that cross over the center line of the broaching. That's what the term paracentric means. Okay. That is a indication of a smart or a good design of the broaching. Yale Keyways, possibly Lockwood as well, but Yale Keyways certainly from the 19th century would have basically have looked like you know something like this or literally just something like this there's not a lot of resistance to manipulation when all you have is a rectangular keyway and while I'm exaggerating if you went back far enough in time, 
you will certainly find instances of these odd keyways. We have catalogs on our Yale page from the 19th century. So if you were to fire up this 1884, you're going to see keyways that are not as paracentric as even this really old Lockwood keyway. And you'll note that features of modern, and I say the last 50 years, modern keyways in high security cylinders will be highly paracentric, highly paracentric. Uh, anyway, moving on. Now, in this part number, it has an LA-2. That 2 means it's an Adams Wright cam. This is an 863A if you needed to buy that cam separately. This is a telltale sign that that's going into aluminum storefront or a lock that requires that keyway, which is generally aluminum storefront. There are your two keys, front and back. They have the bidding engraved on the back there. It does say 4263. There is the opposite of the thumb side of the key blank, and then there is the thumb side of the bow of the key blank up. That's what the key looks like. Okay. Now, extended description information. Three-quarter, four-pin Lockwood 1004, 863A cam shown here. This is the broaching of the cylinder plug. That's when you're looking down into the cylinder. Solid brass. There's our size. Now, there's a link below this video here to the manufacturer's page. And keep in mind the 7124LA2 part number. Let's open up the manufacturer's page. Then from here, you'll be able to review not only all of the Kaba Ilko products that we sell by means of this horizontal navigation, but also a link to the manufacturer's key blank catalog here. Let's open that up. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to let that open, but we're not ready for it. I jumped too fast. Let's go to the brass cylinder manual is the one that I wanted. So early in the catalog, maybe the first six pages or so, you'll find how they dissect the part number. So this is a 7124. 7124 in step one. That tells us that it's a three-quarter inch cylinder. As you change that part number, you're going to change the length of the cylinder and how it's constructed. LA keyway. Scroll down here to where our keyways are, LA. That's a Lockwood, and they're telling us it's a 1004 blank. If you copy that part number, then do a find function on your keyboard for 1004, you'll find where they list what key blank you can use. And the reason I say that is because clients will say, I want the cylinder, but 10 extra blanks, because I'm going to, etc. you know, cut more blanks. You'd be looking for a 1004 or an L1. That's the easy number. And we're going to review that when we get to the key blank catalog. Uh, let's go back up to page six. Two, we talked about that being the Adams Wright cam. Here are your options for cams from Kaba, Kaba Ilko. Two is the Adams Wright cam. If you were doing, if you were doing an, uh, a mortise lock for a thin door and it's from Accurate. Uh, you're probably going to need this Clover cam, a 19. So you can do a 7124 LA19 and get that cam. That could be a realistic uh, application. It could also be where you need an LA1, a 1 cam, because it's a 1920s mortise lock, which would have taken what they called a Yale cam at one time. We just now call it the standard cam. But if someone says they want a Yale cam, you've got to determine, do they mean a Yale cam or do they mean a Yale cam? If it's an old timer, real old timer, they might be meaning this. Now the keying, Kaba Ilko can do different keying on this, but before we get that to that, the different finishes, set the chromes, the brasses, the bronze, satin, polished, black, Duracolor brown, options are there. May not be in stock, but, but options are there. They might require that we buy a box of 10, but the options are available. Then the keying, this uh, part number had KD, that means if you ordered seven of these, they're all going to be keyed different. If you ordered two, they'll be keyed different. You can change that code to a KA2, meaning groups of two will be keyed alike, or groups of four will be keyed alike, or just all keyed alike. Or they can do master keying, construction keying, and grandmaster keying, or obitted. If you're going to key these into a system that is existing, I would suggest ordering OB, obitted, where the blanks will come uncut so that you can then cut your blanks to work into the system that you're extending or maintaining. 
And that's how we dissect the part number. Now let's go to that key blank catalog that was here. Let's do a control F for 1004. And that is going to find us exactly to our key. Now, the issue with that is a 1004L1 is a five pin blank. This is, this is definitely a four pin blank that we have here. Okay, so you're going to need to modify a five pin down to a four pin should you need to do that. Uh, they don't list a four pin in here that I'm aware of. I can reach out to the factory and find out if they'll entertain an order for them. Certainly there'd be a multiple. I don't believe that it would be a problem, but we'd have to determine that first. And I would suggest that that be realized before you proceeded. As you continue to scroll through the catalog, you'll find lots of instances of a 1004 or this L1 cross references. So on this page, here's the 1004 and L1 here. That is a ILCO to ESP conversion. ESP happens to use L1. And as you continue to click through the back of this catalog, additional cross-references. The JET and ILCO cross-references. Again, it's L1 to 1004. Looking to see if a 1000... Okay, here's an example. The Lockwood blank for a 1004 was a B308. They don't tell us if it's 5 or 6 pin. But it was a B308. I wonder if I have any Lockwood archival catalogs in here. Let's take a look. Probably this one, Lockwood Manufacturing. Oh, yeah. Look at that. We've got some old catalogs. So if you want to take a trip down memory lane, here would be your catalogs. 1953. Let's see what was all the news. Morris Falk. ILCO, Independent Lock Company, is what that stands for. Um, not as much of a catalog as I would have assumed. Or a biography. Let's try 1932. You can see that's not an insignificant document. We've got that document open, and we can scroll into it. It's 316 pages of Lockwood hardware from 1932. So, there you go. I'm sure that 1004 keyway is likely in here, but in this era, you still had bit keys along with pin tumbler keys. You had lever tumbler locks, which is what it would, would operate from a bit key. Some people call them skeleton keys alongside pin tumbler. And I don't know what keyway this is, but doesn't it look awfully familiar to a 1004? They don't tell us the keyway on here. Well, it was a... We know that... What was the part number? A B308? Is that what the cross-reference was? I don't think I can... Yeah... B308 is what that part, that cross-reference was. But I don't see that coming up here when I do a search. Well, maybe. It's such a large document. Yeah, I don't see it cross-referencing to a B308. That part number may not have been... Wow. That part number may not have been used in that... in 1932 is the bottom line. Beautiful Art Deco design. Just so classic and timeless. inspirational in my opinion. Okay, now also on that manufacturer's page from Kaba Ilko are other encyclopedic documents. Um, manuals on their key machines. There's also a technical document on their Gemini, which is a dimple key system that is founded on the principle of posi uh, positional master keying, a topic beyond this video and a topic beyond my grasp of locksmithing principles for the most part. Let's wrap up this video on camera. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video.
In conclusion, this video was to talk about where you'd likely use this cylinder. If you've used it somewhere else, please let us know. Also, to show you how we dissect the part number to where you can build different part numbers. And also show you the archival encyclopedic documentation as it pertains to this Lockwood system as well. If you have any questions on the Lockwood, uh, pardon me, the Kaba Ilko 7124LA2 in a 2060 finish or any other Kaba Ilko product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you. Again, thank you for watching. And if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up. Please subscribe and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.